Hello everyone, in this video I'll be demonstrating several things you can do after installing Ubuntu 20.04. So the first time run of Ubuntu will give you this welcome screen so you can connect online accounts. You can also do it later, so don't feel the pressure to have to do it right now. You can help improve Ubuntu by sending some information about your system, the options you chose during install. There's a location service. You can skip all this, you don't have to do it right now. And then we're ready to go. We can install some brand new applications. First, I'm going to the application launcher, the show applications. I'm going to do a search for updates, which I want to open the software updater. Just to make sure all the repositories are updated before I go and installing any applications. Because sometimes errors happen when you try and install an application, and quite simply, it can be that the software repositories are out of date. So, most essential to install some updates, may as well get it out of the way. While that does its job, I'll show you where you can get additional applications from. That is the Ubuntu Software Center. You can also open it by searching for software, of which there's quite a range of applications to navigate through. The Ubuntu Software Center also includes access to Snap packages. These are a different type of package format, which is cross-platform, and they continually receive updates. This is a contrast to the default deb-based packages that Ubuntu uses. You've got things like web browsers, the kernel, and some other essential tools that will receive updates throughout the five years that Ubuntu 20.04 will be supported for. But for brand new applications, snaps are the way to go. And now I'll show you how to install some proprietary software, starting with the audio and video codecs. Well, if you missed the opportunity to install them at time of system install, there's a way of doing it afterwards. And I'll have to use the terminal in this case. Just type in sudo apt install ubuntu restricted extras. Type in your sudo or admin password and then accept the install. If you're after proprietary graphics drivers, go into the software and updates. Across to additional drivers, now I should point out the only proprietary graphics drivers you'll be installing are the NVIDIA graphics drivers. AMD and Intel graphics drivers come built in, ready to use via the MESA packages, which are built in into Ubuntu. Now I'll show you how to do a bit of tweaking on your system. So if you right click on the desktop and go to settings. Let's start with the screen display and night light. Night light is a really nice feature to use to reduce the amount of blue light coming out of your display. Helps with reducing sleeplessness. If I go back to the screen display, I've got the option of using fractional scaling to help with the high definition displays. We can adjust some aspects of the theming via appearance. We've got the choice of using the Yaru light, standard or dark theme. You can also do some customization on the dock, including moving its position on the screen and changing its size. There's also some different wallpapers to choose from and plenty more on the internet. A lot of the wallpapers I use have been made by Charlie Henson, and I'll leave a link to his page in the video description. But some of those tweaks are a bit basic really, so I'll have to go and install some additional packages to do some further tweaking to the GNOME desktop. I'll start with installing the GNOME Tweaks tool. I just did a search for Tweak to get this package. So just install it, provide authorization, and that's installed a couple of packages, extensions and tweak tool. So starting with extensions, we have a nice easy way of disabling desktop icons, the Ubuntu dock, should you want to. So I'll leave that tool and then go across to the tweak tool, where you can customize the window title bar, for example, showing the close, minimize and maximize buttons on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. Now the left hand side is where I'm used to, but it's up to you if you want to leave them where they are on the right hand side. You can group some of these similar applications together in the application launcher. For example, you just drag and drop them over each other. Let's get LibreOffice organized into one group. Just literally a case of dragging and dropping them over each other. So now I have Office as a folder here. Makes it a little bit tidier in this menu. And if you want them back out again, then you can just drag and drop them outside of the folder. Now I want to take a look at the GNOME extensions. So if you open the Firefox and go to the website extensions.gnome.org, it's a little bit of a faff to get this started off. So we have to install an add-on into the browser, or the Firefox browser. So yeah, continue installation there. But it's not quite as simple as that because we have a package missing in Ubuntu. So if I refresh the page, 
it will say the native host connector is not detected. Refer to the documentation. So we have to install another package. I'm just going to scroll down to the Debian package that we need. So let's sudo apt install Chrome GNOME shell. So I'll just take a copy of that. Our shortcut for opening terminal is Control Alt T, Control Shift V or middle mouse click, enter. And there we are, that gets our package installed. Now if I go back a page, do a refresh, that gets rid of that warning. And I can install any of these extensions here in the list. Now there's quite a lot, but there's one in particular I wanted to look at, the GS Connect tool. This is for connecting an Android phone to your desktop. So just move the slider across to on, select install. And then if I go up to the menu there on the top right, select mobile devices, mobile settings, I have to pair my phone to start with and it's picked two devices up off my list. Well, that's because I have the extension already installed. But the extension you'll need is the KDE Connect, which you can get from either the Play Store or F-Droid. I'm going to pop back to customization this time, looking specifically at the dock here on the left-hand side. So if I install the dconf editor, I will admit that customization of the GNOME desktop is very messy. Anyway, if I go across the org folder into GNOME, I need to scroll down to shell, shell, extensions, dash to dock. There's a few things we can do in here. I'll start with click action. So I'll select that, untick the use default value, and then I'm gonna change this to minimize. So that changes the behavior of applications to minimize on click if they're already open. If you want to open another copy of an application, then you middle click. I find that a better way to navigate around the applications. And I think that's a bit more reminiscent of Windows. Scrolling down a bit further, I have no need for the minimize shift. The minimize on the shift and click because we just changed the behavior. Now scroll down to the running indicator style. So you can change the indicator that shows when an application is open. I found that dot's a bit vague really. It's a little bit, uh, a bit too easy to miss that. So you can change to a solid line instead. That's a little bit more obvious. The scroll action, uh, switch to workspace. No, we'll have cycle windows. That's a bit better. Now if you scroll up and down, it changes the application if you have multiple applications open or moves to a different application. And the final setting here is the show trash. If you want to see the trash can or recycle bin, and that's it, that's several things to do after installing Ubuntu 20.04. And not to forget the little joke of install a different Linux distribution. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.